and God was going to anoint the most holy. Daniel said, in Isaiah the 61st chapter in the first verse, there the prophet speaking of Christ says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he anointed me to preach. Luke the fourth chapter, Jesus said, today this scripture is fulfilled in your ears. Somebody said, do you think God really anointed Jesus? Yes, sir. Somebody said, when? Well, Acts 10, 38. There the apostle said, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power. Somebody said, Brother Wilson, I didn't know Jesus had to be anointed the Holy Ghost. He was God's son. He was not only God's son, he was our example in all things. If he needed no anointing with the Holy Ghost, we wouldn't need any anointing with the Holy Ghost. But he needed to be anointed with the Holy Ghost and power. Amen. Acts 10, 38 tells us that. Somebody said, Brother Wilson, when was he anointed? That day that John was baptizing and he turned around and said, Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. And Jesus walked up and said, John, I want you to baptize me. Why, John said, I need for you to baptize me. Jesus said, Suffer to be so now, for it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. He didn't say it becomes me, but it becomes me and it becomes you. It becometh us. Throw himself right in there. Yeah. To fulfill all righteousness. John let him down in the water and put him under. And when he brought him up, thank God, the Spirit of God descended on him in the form of a dove. And God spoke in an audible voice from heaven and said, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. For the benefit of new people, some people ask the question, Why did the Spirit descend on him in the form of a dove? Well, if you go right back to the Old Testament again, when they brought sacrifices, the rich brought a lamb and the poor brought a dove. When Mary took Jesus up the temple, she's a poor woman, she couldn't take nothing but a couple turtle doves. But when Christ stood in the water and the Spirit of God descended on him in the form of a dove, it was telling us nothing more as God said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I'm well pleased, hear him. There is the lamb in the water and the dove on his head. He's the sacrifice for the rich and the poor. There's no other sacrifice, only in Jesus Christ. He was anointed with the Holy Ghost. There are a lot of people that can't understand two works of grace. You know, we've got people running over the country, and they say, I just can't understand this business, two works of grace. If you're born with the Spirit of God, did you get the Spirit there? Uh-huh. Well, he's a person. If you got him, you got him. Well, God was afraid you'd run off that track. So in a couple of scriptures, he called him he. But in many scriptures, he likened him to water, oil. He liquidized him. For what reason? So he could show you you could get him by measure. Yes. 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 Well, I don't believe it. John 3.34, John 3.34, that God didn't give him the Spirit by measure, but he did us. Amen. Amen. So he simplified the truth when he liquidized it. Put it down just a better light foot, showed you with those measures. That shows you can be born of the Spirit, actually born of the Spirit, and yet not have the fullness of the Spirit. He didn't get him unto Christ by measure. Amen. But he did unto us. But he did unto us. So we see here by the scripture, thank God, that the sin offering came after the anointing of the high priest. Aaron was anointed. Then after Aaron the high priest was anointed, the sin offering was given. Let's come right over with the Anatite. Three years before Christ ever offered the sin offering, he was the high priest was anointed. Amen. Well, somebody said, Brother Wilson, according to that, you got people royce and cleaned up, amen, and going in before the sin offering is ever given. That's exactly what happened. John the Baptist preached the gospel, and for three years, people got into the kingdom, and the sin offering had never yet been given. <laughs> amen! Somebody said, I don't believe it. It's Bible. It's Bible. Somebody said, how oh, you know? Acts 19 and 4. What did Paul tell them down there? Then Paul tell him down next, Ephesus. He said in the third verse, Then said Paul, John, barely baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ. 
Thank God they got saved. Got their sins washed away. Was baptized. And the sin offering was never given yet. Come on. Come on. It happened in the type and it happened in the anatype. I'm telling you we need to pay a little more attention to patterns. We can learn a lot of things about the reality if we pay a little more attention to patterns. But if it happened in the pattern, you better start looking for it in the reality. Well, somebody said, Brother Wilson, I ain't got no business with that pattern business. We've come to Christ. Well, I want to set you straight on something. Brother, they couldn't look to the end. They had to have blindfolds. And I'm telling you right now, there's many truths that shine so gloriously, amen, and so magnificently that we can't walk right up and look them in the face. We've got to back off here and come at them kind of gradual. In the antitype and in the type, the high priest was anointed first and then the sin offering was given. By the type, let's follow it right through. The sin offering must come before the consecration of the common priest. Was it so? Amen. By the type, the sin offering must come before the consecration of the common priest. Who has got air and anointed, then the sin offering gives. And following the sin offering, the anointing of the common priest. Was it so? In reality, Jesus went to Calvary died, the sin offering was given, following that was Pentecost, the anointing of the common priest. So the type fits the antitype. Any way you want to look at it. Oh man, that's full of father. Somebody said, Brother Wilson, you're getting people worse before the sin offering was given. I want to repeat, in John the Baptist ministry, they were regenerated in the kingdom. How? By faith. <laughs> Believing in him who was to come. Man, I'm telling you, you can't get people to do that today. Hard luck. It's got to come for they believe it. That's right. Well, you'd have died and went to hell in John today. Oh, John said he's coming. And when he comes, I'm baptizing you with water, but he's going to baptize you with fire. And you think this is hot? Wait till he comes. And they, they just believed in him who was to come, confessed their sins, and John baptized them. Thank God. They got an experience. Got an experience. Got an experience with God. All right, now we go right to the sacrifices of the altar. We must hurry. It seems to me, it seems to me that one thing that thrills people is such scriptures as Hebrews 10 and 10 and other scriptures where it said, where Christ, or the scriptures said Christ once and for all offered himself. And right away they run off with that once and for all business and say that's all there is to it. He's done it once and for all and it's done. Well, that's very true. But only by going back to the type and we see just exactly what Christ done when he done it once and for all. Yeah. Yeah. That which Christ done once and for all, it took three sacrifices to do under the Old Testament. Right. And only by looking at the three sacrifices can you see the completed work of Jesus Christ and what all he done for us yeah. once and for all. Let's go to the first offering, brother. We must hurry. My, my, how late it is already. In the major the 8th chapter, the 14th and 15th verses, and he brought the bull on. All right, remember, God said, now, if we ever get these fellas cleaned up where they can get in, we've got to have a bullet, two rams, anointing oil, a basket of consecration. That's what it's going to take to get them in. And every one of those things is a type of the work that Christ works within our heart and life today in this New Testament experience of salvation. So he brought the bullet. So we're going to kill them now. And he brought the bullet for a sin offering. We got the bully for a sin offering. Here we've talked now and got this clarified. Just like the type, the antitype is true. The high priest was anointed for the sin offering given, and following the sin offering, the common priest was anointed. Now let's take it step by step. So they brought the bully for a sin offering. What did they do? Aaron and his sons laid their hands upon his, the head of the bull. Oh, we not spend time there, but the on the hands. It was nothing more than saying we're putting our sins on this bully. Transferring our sins over on this animal. He's going to die for us. So they brought the bullet for a sin offering, and Aaron and his son put their hands on it. And he right on. And he slew it. And Moses took the blood and put it upon the horns of the altar around the Now blood. listen carefully. We're going into the blood now. Let's see where it goes. And it's very easy to say, I've been washed in the blood. Yes, but let's get some understanding. How you was washed in the blood. 
and what it done for you when it was. Yeah. Yeah. It killed the sin offering. Yeah. This bullet, the sin offering. A type of Christ first off, part of his offering. Yeah. And he killed it, and when he got the blood, what did he do with it? He ran out and washed in and he sons in it. Oh, oh, come on now. They didn't get a bit of it. And he knew this and blood. Moses took the blood. Took the blood from the sin offering. Put it on the horns of the altar. What altar? Right here, this uh, brazen uh, altar. We ain't got nothing to do with this altar yet. Right here where the sin offering was killed at the brazen altar. He took all the blood from that animal and rubbed it on the horns of that altar and poured the rest out of the body. Amen. Amen. When, the, when the drop got on man. Sanctified. All right. What do you read? He slew it and put the blood of it on the horns of the altar, the brazen altar, and purified the altar and poured the blood out of the bottom. Yes. Now, what was it for, brother? Amen. The form of the altar and sanctified it to make reconciliation upon it. All right. Now, this first offering that was offered back here was to make reconciliation. Yes. And that was Christ's first move when he went to the cross. Yes. Amen. To make reconciliation yes. for us. That first part of his offering had nothing to do with any cleansing of us. The first part of the offering was to please a God. A man who was at enmity with us because of our sins and our iniquity. The first part of the offering was to make reconciliation. Amen. No part of that blood was put on the men. Right. And then he said, is that true in the New Testament? One of you get Colossians 1, 20, 22, and behave yourself. Hebrews 2.17, the reason I said behave himself, they like to throw up Jack out to Moore, Oklahoma, and either one of them could read it. I had this brother start reading it, and he got part of it read and threw down his book and went shouting down the aisle. <laughs> Left me. So I had this man get up. I said, you read it. And he read it, and he threw down his book and went shouting down the aisle. I said, forget that scripture. Let's go to the next one. Get something accomplished here. Colossians 1.20.22, Hebrews 2.17. 2 Corinthians 5, 18 to 20. I want you to see that the first part of Christ's offering, my son was only given to reconcile yes. the world back to God. And that blood shed had nothing to do with our redemption, our All salvation. Right. I see. The first offering, remember, to get the priest cleansed, we've got to have a bullet, two lambs, and anointing oil. Yes. We're killing the bullet now. Mm. It's the sin offering. It's for reconciliation. That's what's for. Colossians 1, 20, 22. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself. See, that was the first part of his offering. We get a bit of that blood on us. Mm -hmm. No, no, that blood was shed to reconcile the world back to God. Yes. Yeah. Right on through, 22nd verse. By him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven, and you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind. Isn't that wonderful? By wicked works, yet now has he reconciled. Amen. 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 Hebrews 2.17. Hebrews 2.17. Let's see if that was the first part of Christ's offering. Wherefore in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren. Yes. That he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. All right, 2 Corinthians 5, 18 to 20. We'll go on. We want you to see the first part of this offering, and we'll get down the cleansing shortly. But we've got to face it. We've got to walk up to it. Sure. Christ's first, Christ's first part of his offering on the cross was to reconcile the world back to God. Right. Had nothing to do with our individual cleansing or our justification or our being delivered from sin. Mm -hmm. He opened himself first to reconcile the whole world. Yeah. That means you, sinner friend. Yes, sir. Put you in a place where God will receive you. Amen. Stand where you can even come to God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Second Corinthians 5, 18 to 20. And all things are of God. Who has reconciled us to himself by yeah, Jesus Christ. talking about any man being Christ, he's a new creature. And yeah. all things are of God. Amen. Read on. Yeah. And has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Now come on, church. He not only reconciled us, but he gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Thank God. Yeah. Keep on reading. To wit that God was in Christ, yeah. reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and has committed unto us the word, of reconciliation. Amen. 
All right, thank you, brother. So we see the first part of this offering was merely to make reconciliation, and that's what Christ done. He poured out his blood, amen, to put us back in favor with God. Thank I want God. you to see again, this blood was poured out the bottom of the altar. Sure. See Christ hanging on Calvary's cross with his blood flowing out yes. down the cross and down at the bottom of it. What was it for? To reconcile the world back to God. The third offering. Take the second one now. Let's kill a lamb now. Look her in. In the 18th through the 21st verse. And he brought the ram for a burnt offering. All right, this is a burnt offering. And Aaron and his sons laid their hands upon the head of the ram. Mm -hmm. And he killed it. And Moses sprinkled the blood upon the altar round about. All right, hold it. What did you say? Ain't getting a bit of blood on us here. Sure. It's all that blood's all sprinkled on the altar round about. Amen. We need to know what Christ done when he died for us. Oh, some people can see he's just a man going to the cross and when his blood was spilled, that blood was put on me and I'm set free. And here's the second. Here's the first lamb killed, the second offering. And what was done with the blood, all of it was put right around the altar here. And what was this for? Amen. 18 through 21. Amen. And he cut the ram. He walked on down here. Read right through the 21st verse. I wonder what this burnt offering's for. And he cut the ram into pieces, and Moses burnt the head into pieces with the fat. And he washed the image and the legs in water. And Moses burnt the whole ram upon the altar. All right. It was a burnt sacrifice for a sweet savior. Hold it. Now, here's what this offering for. This is just for a sweet-smelling savior. Amen. Amen. This isn't to redeem man. This isn't to set man free. Yeah. It's another altar trying to please God. Yeah, please God. This is an all offering of a sweet-smelling Savior unto God. He offered himself, first of all, amen, to reconcile. Yeah. Then he turned around in the second part of his offering and offered a sweet-smelling Savior unto God. In Ephesians, the fifth chapter, in the second verse, who's got it? Paul will tell you that's exactly what Christ done. And many other scriptures will tell you, but I'm cutting off some of these scriptures. If you want more scripture, I'll give them to you after the service. Walk in love. Christ also loved us and right has given himself now, for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling Savior. All right, that's the second thing Jesus done when he went to cross. The first part of his sacrifice was to reconcile. Yes, sir. The second part was to offer a sweet-smelling Savior. Sure. Get God in a good mood. Thank you, God, for being willing to reconcile. Get God in a good mood. Yes, sir. You go back in the 8th chapter of Genesis after God so stirred in his wrath with mankind until he destroyed the then known world. Yes, Brother, when Noah got out of the ark, he took the clean beasts and fowls and started the fire and made a sacrifice. And it said he'd come up as a sweet smelling <laughs> savior. <laughs> Amen! And it pleased God so much, he said, I ain't going to destroy Noah's with water anymore. <laughs> what caused that? Noah's sacrifice. Oh, it's so pleased. Oh, and that's why you read the 53rd chapter of Isaiah, please the Lord to bruise. Oh, and they said, how come it pleased you to bruise your own son? Because of the way he could take it. He don't like to bruise you because you're fussed and fat. But it pleased him to bruise Jesus because he took it so sweet. Offered himself a sweet smelling savior unto God. And the whole world was at envy when God was stirred with the whole world. Jesus done it so sweetly. And it pleased the Father. <coughs> and every one of us this morning have been forgiven for Christ's sake. That's right. For Christ's That's sake. Reason. Christ's sake. Oh. Brother, he pleased him. He came down here from the time he was a babe. Right on through, he pleased the Father. Yeah. Somebody said he couldn't have seen. Oh, the many theories that's coming up today. God help us, and especially in these camp meetings, to forget about these light messages and stories and tales and get down to solid. Yeah. God. And in walking distance of here, there's people who claim to be the Church of God's teaching now that Christ never existed, only in the mind of God, though he was born of a woman. Amen. Somebody said, what's that leading up to, doing away at the Trinity? That thing existed way back years and years ago. Nothing more than a move to do away at the Trinity. Amen. Man, and then others say that he couldn't sin. You're hearing that doctrine now, especially among one cleansing people, that Jesus couldn't have sinned. He's the Son of God. Why, it's contrary to the Scripture. He learned 
obedience. He suffered. He was tempted. If he couldn't have sinned, he couldn't have been tempted. My God, let's get back. He was tempted in all points. Yeah. How many points is there to be tempted on? Three. And they said, the devil come at me in a thousand ways. He's a liar. He can't come at you over three ways. Amen. Well, when did he tempt him to all points? Right there. The lust of the flesh. The lust of the eye. And the pride of life. Come on. First John 2.15 tells us, love not the world, neither the things are in the world. And he tells us all that's out there. Maybe you get victory over them three. He ain't got no way to come at you. Amen. Oh, yes. He can tempt you, but my friend, his avenues of approach are cut off right in his face. He pleased the Lord. He pleased the Lord. He pleased the Lord. Pleased the Lord. Thank God when the trying, when the time got trying and the way got hard and the disciples almost ready to give up, Jesus could say, I know the Father has set me, hadn't left me. How come? For I do those things that please him. He pleased the Lord, pleased the Lord. Then laid his life down so beautifully on Calvary's cross. Every man, when the old humanity raised up and he had to go pray three times. And if you read close, he said the same words all three times. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't just in words. But when he got the place, he put him very self in it. God in heaven heard. And he rose up and said, let's get going. Yeah. Thank God. And he didn't go to the cross. The old man to Calvary with his head down. He went with his head up. Yes. He'd already consecrated to the thing. And had the victory over it. In Gethsemane, he went to Calvary with his head up. Thank God. Thankful that he could give himself for a lost and dying world and please. An angry father. So this offering was given, my friend, had nothing to do with us in the thought of our salvation. Given as a sweet-smelling Savior. Now we've killed two sacrifices and we ain't got a bit of blood on us yet. Let's kill another. Bring up the second ram. The ram of consecration. The 22nd verse. And he goes to the other ram. The ram of consecration. Aaron and his sons laid their hands upon the head of the ram, and he slid, and Moses took the blood of it, put upon the tip of Aaron's right ear. Well, look, we're going to get some blood on the man now. On the thumb of his right hand. All right. And upon the great toe of his right foot. Yes. Read through the 24th verse, please. If I can. <laughs> and he's on Aaron's son. All right, here's us now. Here's the common face. And he brought Aaron's son, and Moses put the blood upon the tip of their right ear, and upon the thumb of their right hand, and upon the great toe of their right foot. And Moses put the blood upon the altar round about. All right. Here's the first blood that got on man. When he killed the lamb of consecration, I read a red to us. Moses took some of the blood and he put it on the tip of the ear of those sons, and the hand, and the foot. Amen, and poured the rest out of the old. Does it tell us? Right there, that symbolizes this thought. That through the blood of Jesus Christ, he's bought us. We belong to him. Blood on the tip of the ear, my friend tells us nothing more than he touched us. Thank God that we might hear. Amen. On the hands, he's bought us and freed us from the powers of sin that we might work. And on the foot or the toe that we might walk in his statutes and keep his commandments. And right there is where the church is purchased. Acts 20 and 28. That take heed to yourself and to the cross over which the Holy Ghost made the overseer to feed the church of God which he purchased with his own blood. Amen. That blood on the tip of the ear, the hand and the foot showed my friend that approaching the rest was poured out the altar. It showed that these men belonged to God as much as the altar did. Uh-huh. 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 Yeah, here's the yeah, yeah. The church of God. Uh-huh. 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 You're his property. Yeah, the church of God needs to be told this morning that you're not your own. Amen. 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 
The nutshell. The nutshell. It's the old thing today of people saying, well, I'll do what I want to. You can if you want to, but you can't be a part of the church. The nutshell. You're bought with a price. The precious blood of Jesus. Amen. So right here in the ram of the consecration, the first blood got on the individual, which is a type of the blood, my friend, being applied to our heart and life. And I want to repeat this morning and make it plain. Right here is where the church is perched. When that individual comes in old time repentance, born again, my friend, in a born again experience through regeneration. Where's the new birth come? Not off here in sanctification or some other word, when you're regenerated. That's it. When you're regenerated, you become a new generation. Right there. You're born again of the Spirit of God and the Word of God. And you're purchased right there. You're a part of the church. When they said they're a part of the church when they're down in Babylon, they certainly are. If they're born again, they're a member of the church. They need to come. They've got some moving to do. Man, and if they'll listen to the word of God and the Holy Spirit, He'll bring them together and unify them into a local working phase somewhere of the church where they can work together in the body. But wherever they are, they are members. Sure. They've been purchased. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Somebody said, I don't believe it. I don't believe anybody's a member of the church in the first work. You don't. Well, the candlestick is in the first room, not the second one. Amen. Amen. That's right. Everybody to understand the revelation of what these seven candlesticks are. Uh -huh. And that is on the first one. Uh -huh. Somebody said, ain't no light of the church down Babylon, there ain't. Better read again. Uh -huh. Revelation 18.24 said, the light of the candle will shine no more in thee. Sound like it shined there once. Yeah. 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 The voice of the bride won't be heard in you uh -huh. anymore. Sound like it's down there once. Yes, sir. Amen. Brother, wherever men and women have been purchased with the blood of Jesus Christ, they are our brother and sister. Amen. Somebody said you're spoiling the message of unity. I'm not hurting the message of unity one bit. I'm here to tell you right now this morning, my friend, because of preaching a separateness, and I believe in preaching a separateness, or we wouldn't have the people out of Babylon that we got here. But brother, I got them out by not telling them that they don't belong to the church. They're no part of it whatsoever. I didn't get them out that way. I got them out by telling them there's my brother or sister. They belong to God. They didn't belong to that organization. They belong to Zion, and they need to pick up and come. Amen. My friend, right there where the first blood was applied, when the church is purchased, right there in that first work of grace, if you please, and when he brought us to that experience of real salvation, my friend, the church was purchased. We belonged to him. Well, somebody said, that's it. There's where the blood applied, and everything is gone. Thank God we're cleaned up and we're ready to go. Well, that's good. But the types, I'm sorry as I can be for your sake, but the types teach the blood being put on twice. Yes. Yeah. Amen. And so does the anatype. Sure. Well, somebody said, you no need to no more blood put on. After we're regenerated and born again, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. Well, let's look. Let's just look. Let's just look. Amen. Let's just look. Not long ago, a sister called me disturbed over the phone and said, there's a man here only teaching one work of grace, and he said he can take two glasses of water, and I believe you is here. He could almost convince you that there's only one cleansing. I said, that right. What do we do, Brother Wilson? I said, go back and talk to that preacher tonight and tell him to put his two glasses of water away and take the Old Testament and prove there's only one cleansing. Amen. God help us. Let's get rid of these medicine men. Yeah. And get some preachers to hold some yeah. revival. Yeah. Logic. Reason. You don't get the truth that way. You get it by faith. Believing God's eternal word. The rightly dividing of God's eternal word. So the blood was put on here. In the first word. Apply. A cleanse. 
We know the Bible teaches without the shedding of blood there's no remission of sins and as sure as there's blood there there's something needs to be cleansed. The blood was put on in the first work. Amen. Somebody said where? He took the ram of consecration and put the blood on the ear, the toe, and the foot. Amen. As much to say as he purchased these people. There's where we're purchased for God's church. Thank God we belong to him. Now let's go on to the anointing oil, the second work of grace. Amen. And see if there's any blood in it. If there's blood in it, there's something yet needs to be cleansed. No need of blood if there isn't. All right. Let's put the anointing oil. Right on down here. We'll hurry. We'll hurry. I'm in not too big a hurry, but we'll hurry. Uh, amen. Come right on down the anointing oil, the 30th verse, brother. All right. We'll hurry. Moses took the anointing oil. All right, the anointing oil, I believe everyone realizes, is the type of the Holy Spirit. He likened to the oil. And this was to sanctify him, so we know it's the Holy Spirit. So he took the anointing oil. And of the blood. Oh, now, wait a minute. They got the blood on them. They got the blood on them at the first word. They got blood on them at regeneration back here. But he took the anointing oil and of the blood. All right. Which was upon the altar. Which was upon the altar. Sprinkled it upon air. All right, now wait a minute. What blood could this be? It could only be the blood of the ram of consecration. Why? All the blood of these animals has already been poured out at the bottom of the altar. So he took the blood that was on the altar from this ram of consecration. He took the oil and he took some of the blood. All right? Come on. Which was upon the altar, and sprinkled it upon Aaron, and upon his garment, and upon his son. All right. And upon his son's garments with him, and mm -hmm. sanctified Aaron, and his garment, and his son. All right, now we know this is for consecration. Thank you, brother. And they got ready after they had come through that first experience. Yeah. got ready to be sanctified. He took the oil with the type of the Holy Spirit, and he took some of the blood yeah. from the Lamb of Consecration. It will hold true 100% for the Anatite. And he put it in that blood and he sprinkled it on Aaron's sons to sanctify. So we've got blood used in a second work of grace. And as sure as there's blood there, there's cleansing. Nowhere in the scripture is the blood applied other than for a cleansing. Amen. Amen. That's it. Amen. Now let's take it apart a little bit, just fast we can. Oil mixed with blood, and I want to repeat, it's the blood of consecration. How do you know? The blood of the sin offering was at the foot of the altar, verse 15. The blood of the burnt offering was sprinkled on the altar. It was used up. The lamb of consecration was being dealt with at the time of this anointing. Now the question is, why the blood is put in the Holy Spirit, or why the blood is necessary in a second work of grace? That's the thing that's troubling people today. I want to say, first of all, the blood is the means of sanctification. We couldn't have sanctification without that blood. Amen. First of all, the blood is the means of sanctification. Every one of you stand up and read some scriptures in Romans. Amen. Let's look closely here. Let's look closely here to the blood by the word of God. I know this is lengthy, but brother, sister, we need to understand these things. I don't want to take two or three services, use two or three services to teach it, so let's get right into it. We want to see the necessity of the blood here in the second work of grace. I don't believe God, I just can't believe God would put it in there if it wasn't necessary. Amen. I don't believe he'd put it in the pattern if it wasn't going to be true in the reality. Amen. In Romans, the third chapter, the 23rd to the 25th verse. Now let's go carefully here on what the blood does for us. See, this is the reason we took Christ's offering apart. We can easily say he just offered himself once for all. Yeah. He done the whole business. But unless we go back and break it down, we won't know exactly what he done for us. Mm -hmm. We want to know what the blood does for us. Sure. It has a greater meaning, too. When we See what the blood does for us in the reality, and then we'll know why it took all this work back here. In Romans, the third chapter, brother, verse 23 to 25. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Yeah. 
being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Yes. Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood. Whoa! Now right there is what saves you and what sanctifies you. Through faith in his blood. I don't get a bit on you. No, sir. <laughs> no, sir. Amen. 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 Ain't one of you. Ain't hey, one of you had to clean yourself up when you got up in the altar. No, sir. You ain't no blood on you. Uh-uh. Faith in his blood. I see it. When you read in the scripture that he died that you might live, that he, amen, suffered to relieve you from your transgression through faith in that blood that was shed, you come and confess your sins and he forgives them and removes them. I saw that it comes. Now read that verse again. We want to go very carefully there. And see what the blood does for us first. All right. To be a propitiation. All right. Through faith in his blood. Through faith in his blood. All right. To declare his righteousness. Hold on a minute. For the rest of these verses, don't forget that clause. Through faith in his blood. Amen. There'll be scriptures that says through faith we do this. Faith in what? Faith in his blood. Sure. I read that verse again. Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood All right. to declare his righteousness mm-hmm. for the remission of sins that are past. Whoa! There's the first thing it's done, blood done for you. It remitted the sins that are past. Glory to God. Yeah. Now wait right there. Amen. Through faith in his blood, he remitted the sins that are past. Now here you come. Amen. You're out in the world. You don't know nothing about the truth. And somebody preaches to you how Jesus died and shed his blood to remove your sin. Every past sin will be forgiven. So you come on and you repent and you confess through faith in his blood. I believe Jesus shed his blood for me. Uh-huh. Thank God you get every past sin remitted. Uh-huh. Now that's what the blood does for you in the first word. Yes. Well, somebody said the blood cleanses us from all sin. Yeah, I know that, but hold still just a little. Uh-huh. Romans 5 and 9. Much more then, being now justified by his blood. Hold it. We're justified by his blood. Sure. But if in his blood he remits our sins, removes the sins that are past. Mm-hmm. I'm glad Paul put that in there. I like it, sir. And we're justified by his blood. Now, that's what the blood does for us. Now, somebody said, that's all the blood does. Well, now, just wait a minute. Just wait a minute. First Peter, the first chapter, and the first two verses. Let's see what else the blood does. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ. I believe I can believe him. To the strangers Somebody said, no, Adam Clark don't say so. Well, I ain't right sure God told Adam Clark to write a book, but I know he told Peter to write one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, praise the Lord. Amen. Peter, an apostle, he gave him. All right. According to the foreknowledge of God, the All Father, right. through sanctification of the Spirit, Unto obedience All right. and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, now you Christ. don't need no sprinkling of blood and sanctification. That's right That's here. Now, there. Peter taught it. All yeah. right. There was sprinkling in the blood back here in yeah. sanctification and the sprinkling of the blood in sanctification in the New Testament. Oh, sure. Oh, you so right here. Amen. Yeah. Read again, brother. <laughs> Read again. Amen. According to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, under obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. All right. Grace Go unto you to and the peace. Type, just a moment. It's all good, but we haven't got time to read it all. Go right back here again to the type when he took the oil to sanctify him, he sprinkled the blood. Mm-hmm. Paul Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, speaking of our sanctification, how we get it under obedience. Yeah. Sanctification of the Spirit and the sprinkling of the blood of Christ. <laughs> he annotated the type. Sure he did. Romans, the fifth chapter, Paul said, Therefore, being justified by faith. Faith in what? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Come on, faith in what? That's right. Well, I read it to you. Through faith 
believed in his blood were justified. So being therefore being justified by faith, let me put this in because it's true. Therefore being justified by faith in his blood, mm -hmm. we have peace with God. Sure. By whom also yes. we have access into this grace by faith uh -huh. in his blood. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. In the yes. place wherein we stand. Somebody said, you can't say faith in his blood. I ain't Paul here. That's right. Amen. Why, old brother Warner wrote the song, and it's as true today as it was the day he wrote it. That God sprinkled her alders of cleansing for me. Yeah. He thought. We'll get it pretty shortly and show you there had to be blood on both alders. Mm -hmm. Both experiences had to have blood in. Yeah. How come? Because there's something, my friend, within the justified man or woman that he needs to be cleansed. Yeah. Amen. I repeat again, brother, like this statement, because I preach the same gospel. My friend, you haven't got a damaged sin in you, but you got an Adamic nature. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. One cleansing people that try to fight this message. So you're going around telling that people lost for Adam's sin. There's nobody lost for Adam's yeah. sin. Never was anybody lost for Adam's sin, never will be. No, you're lost for your own sin. Yeah. And they're asking catchy questions. If you're not careful, you'll answer the wrong way. Uh-huh. Somebody said, how is it? They'll ask you a question like this. Did spiritual death come about because of Adam's sin? Somebody said, how'd you answer them? This way, not mine. Your spiritual death didn't come about because Adam sinned. Your spiritual death came because you sinned. There was a nature within you that, that uh, moved you, amen, and crushed you, and brought you to the place. But you're not lost because of that. You'd have never been lost if you hadn't to commit your own sin. You got your own spiritual death on you. Yes, sir. All had the same thing. Amen. Yeah. Something yet to be cleansed from. <laughs> Just as sure as we're here. And I want to repeat. Amen. We'll, we'll not call it sin. But we'll call it a nature that'll cause you. That'll press you. That'll deceive you. Amen. That'll work within you. In a way. To fill you. Sure we're here. Right. I'll never get the hand. Cleansing on the second altar. Cleansing on the second altar. Just as sure as we're here. Somebody said, well, I didn't know that there had to be blood in the sanctification. Hebrews 13 and 12. Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood. Uh-huh. Suffered without the gate. Go read Hebrews 10, 19 to 22. Just a little bit more here. We'll be through pretty shortly. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the All blood right, of Jesus. Back there in the old tabernacle, there was a holy place in the holiest. Sure. Nobody but the priest. The priest came into this room, no one but the high priest. Went into the holiest place once a year. Just once a year. Wasn't used very much. All right. Now, but Paul has got this all clarified, and he's tying in. He said, now here's the sum of it. And he's coming right on through. He said, now we have boldness. Yeah. Uh -huh. The old high priest went in there with fear and trembling. Yeah. Amen. The smoke of the sacrifice wasn't right. The smoke right. didn't cover him. Amen. He fell dead. Uh -huh. He went in there with fear and trembling. Uh -huh. But now we can go into the holiest place Count with bones. How do we get in there? Read it to us. By the blood of Jesus. All right, what I thought. He didn't say in the holy place. He was speaking to people who was already in the holy place. And they said, don't believe. He said, brethren. Mm-hmm. Amen. Why do we have boldness to go right on into the second room? Sure. How do we get in there? By the blood of Christ. Well, let's go back and get the type. Fourth chapter of Leviticus, when the high priest got ready to go in, what did he do? He killed the sacrifice, caught the blood, took it with him, rubbed it on the horns of this altar. The golden altar, the yes. incense altar. Yes. Come on. Had to be blood on both of them. Now, come on. Here we come. We come through justification. Thank God we're purchased for the blood of Christ. We're regenerated. We're able to come into this first room. Yes. Now, thank God. God's opened up a way through the blood of Christ. We can come on in. Uh -huh. He's already put the blood on the altars. <laughs> Amen. He's arranged for our cleansing. 
Well, somebody said, how do you, what do we have to do to get on in? Die. Mm -hmm. And we never got in there alive. Mm -hmm. If you did, you'd wreck the place. Mm -hmm. You'd change it. Yeah. Gotta die. This is where Christ died for you. This is where you die for him. We know we're truly born again. Thank God been justified of past sins have been remitted. We're clear before God and we're able to come to this altar. Present your body. A living sacrifice. Christ already put the blood on the altar. Somebody said, how do you know? Now come on. Just like the old high priest had to carry the blood from this altar, brazen altar, to the horns of this golden altar. Revelation, the 8th chapter, will teach you that our high priest, Jesus Christ, he died, he suffered, he shed his blood here, and he carried his blood right on with him, not to the golden altar which was in the tabernacle, but to the golden altar which is before the throne of God. Paul said in Hebrews, the 8th chapter, that he offered himself, or he appeared in heaven for us. He appeared here on the earth, offered himself a sacrifice. Then he went right to heaven, to the golden altar, which is before the throne of God. And there he appeared for us. What do you mean he appeared for us? Thank God he sprinkled them horns <laughs> with blood. Thank God to open up the way where we could come into not the Old Testament second room, but into the very presence of God. Glory be to God where he can move into this temple and bring in as little light foot said, it's there the law is written in our hearts and it's there the real heavenly manna that begins to work and the rod buds and thank God the angels, look at them. Every time I look at them cherubim, I think what Peter said, they look into it, they desire to see it, but they can't. Thank God the angels run around liking to see it, but can't. And you're enjoying the fullness of it while they're looking down on it. Amen. 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 That 8th chapter Revelation tells us as it follows this line of thought through that the old high priest went in here once a year the congregation waited outside. He offered the sacrifice, went into the presence of God, come out and bless the congregation and dismiss them. And the 8th chapter of Revelation said, when our high priest went in, come on, just like the old one, he took a censer of incense. Yeah. The psalmist tells us that incense, the prayers of the saints, yeah. there was given him a censer full of incense, yeah. and he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar which is before the throne. Now I want you to see, he left the priest back here. Amen. He left them standing. The high priest went in up to the golden altar before the throne of God. He said, you pray the Father, you go to Jerusalem and pray. There's your incense. Now I'm going to go up to the golden altar before the throne of God. Now I'm going to pray. And the Father is going to send you another comforter. This is the Holy Spirit. Thank God when the old high priest had emptied his incense and come on back out, he blessed the people, let them go. But when our high priest went in, the eighth chapter of Revelation said after he'd emptied, after he'd emptied, amen, that censer, or after he'd finished his prayer, he took that censer full of fire off the altar and cast it into the earth. Amen. Or the day of Pentecost came into being when he cast the fire of God's Holy Spirit in the earth. Somebody said, how do you know? Read the eighth chapter of Revelation and it adds up 100% of the second chapter of Acts. When that fire hit the earth, the revelator said there was voices and lightning and earthquake. And the revelation said they begin to shout and they begin to speak and they begin to praise God. I want you to see this morning. I want you to see this morning. Our high priest, our high priest is there. 